I have a pro, I have a Roman profile. Well, I yes, don't care, you're beautiful, but, but sure. I don't like doing your profile. Beautiful. The only way I can be beautiful is with surgical tools. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. Yes, yeah, sure. Please. I love you. <laughs>
Who do they think Danny Aiello is? Wow, you know, I, I'm not a social person with social media and things of that nature. Uh, it, to me, it's a very dangerous thing mm -hmm. for some people taking advantage in very bad ways and really affecting other people who they may be writing and saying things about. I don't like to see bad things about myself. You know, I don't like to. And I always had the feeling in social media, people will tell you exactly what they feel oh, about yeah, and you like because worse. Because they don't have to face you. Yeah, there's no, there's no yeah. filter because they, it's Unless crazy. it's Instagram or something, but ordinarily. Yeah, by the way, Instagram, I'm just going to stick up for Instagram. No, I don't know it. You I know. think Instagram is positive and friendly. Play. And like what I get from fans of my show is all positive, not all, right, but right. it's all, the th nice things they say, yes. it's upbeat. It's not like the others. So well, I, let me tell you, Claudia, yeah. Louis's uh, wife, sends me all my tweets. Now, I don't know if she's deciphering those things and saying what's bad or good, but apparently... Wait, Claudia everything, sends him the tweets that he well, feels she like... Does. That she, she, she sends, she sends me all good ones. Ah, uh, that's And nice. I keep thinking... I think, I think it's positive I, well, for you. I can't imagine. Yeah, you, I can't imagine that there's negative. If I negative. tell you the tweets that she sent, they're fantastic. Yeah. I begin to be... This is me. Yeah. Because whenever something happens to me in this business, I might have told you before, I often said, how good could it be if I got it? <laughs> you know, You're crazy. But I've always been that way. And that's why my book was called I Only Know Who I Am When I Am Somebody Else. Because I was never able to truly enjoy a compliment the way people should. I should just take it and that's it. Leonard DiCaprio, Leonardo. We were at this function in Brooklyn and... Uh, this happens to me all the time, and I, I can't figure it out. Sometimes I think people are taking advantage, making fun in their own way. The first one, I'll mention James Gandolfini, may he rest in peace. He used to come to me every so often, and if I'm in a place, he'd walk over to me, and he would bow to me. He would genuflect and said, I honor you. That's in your book. I read that. Yes. This is Jim. Yes. This is a true story. All right, now let's go to Bradley Cooper. We went to see his movie, uh, Sniper or whatever it American was. American Sniper. And we're sitting there, and we're about 20 rows back, and he's up, Bradley's up there being interviewed by the director of that movie. And Louis Clint and I Eastwood. are sitting in, with a crowd of people, and I looked at Louis, I said, this guy is looking at me. I'm talking about Bradley. Now, I'm maybe 50 feet in the back, and I'm saying this guy's looking at me anyway. They finish their, their personal interview with the pe people, and he walks up. When we start to walk out, he comes running after me, and he says, I honor you, look, did he? Yeah, he said, I, I honor love you. When, I loved you in Jacob's Ladder, when, in you, Jacob's quoted Ladder when you quoted Nietzsche. That was that. Leonardo DiCaprio, last year, a year and a half ago, yeah. we're at this huge party, yeah, all parties. Italian millionaires. Uh -huh. Every one of them. Whose party is this? It was in Brooklyn. It, it was, was Bomonti's restaurant. Oh, okay. And the guy that you know, Vinny Viola, is the man who was, uh, oh, God, he, were, he was Wall Street, big finance man. Trump mentioned, had him as the Army representative, but he gave it up. He said he couldn't do it. He was too busy. Okay. He's a very wealthy, wealthy guy. So he throws these parties. He had this party for an ex-Met. And I'm, st I'm in the middle by myself. I think I was the only actor there with the exception of Leonardo walks in and he's taking pictures. He's sitting down, we're in the middle by ourselves eating, crowded restaurant. And Louis says to me, Leonardo DiCaprio's over there. He's taking pictures of you. I said, of me? Wait, of you? And you what didn't realize that? What do you want to do me for? Yeah. What, me? So he said, yeah, Louis, and then a man who looks like Salvador Dali, yeah. with a mustache, and he comes over there, and I die, and he Leonardo would like to uh, load your autograph, or something like that. He walks over and asks me, and I'm saying, what? So I, I told Louis, I said, well, anyway, there's a Monsignor who's at the entrance of the place who I knew, who at the beginning of the party was there. He said, Danny, before you say, go tonight, would you say goodbye? I said, yes, I'll stop by. I get up prematurely out of that table after all these things happen with Leonardo, and I start walking toward the Monsignor. Leonardo apparently thinks I'm going and starts running after me. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Louis with me, and he stops me, and he starts saying, I loved you. You made me cry in Once Around. 
And I'm, he's starting to compliment me where I'm getting embarrassed. So I jump up. I said, I loved you in Aviator. You were great in Gangs of New York. So this is generally what I do when a person starts hitting me with you those slam, things. You slam it. I stop it. And then we got pictures of it. That he'll show That's you. That's so he'll cool. Show you. But it happens to me constantly. Of course. You're very lovable and you're an inspiration. So you're an inspiration on the screen. Wow. And at the same time, you're, you, I feel like your personality comes through too. You know what I mean? Like the, you can tell that you are who you are. And right away, you are who you are. But you, I don't know who I am. Yeah, but I <laughs> think that you do. I think that you do. Yeah. I know that's the name of your book. I'm not going to argue with whoever no, came up no. with the title. It's but very I, interesting. And I'll yeah. just stop after saying this. Uh, when, when I'm playing a character, quite naturally I know who I am because I investigate the character. I find out where he's from in my own head. That's making, making it up. And I know the words, but the words that somebody else have written for me. Mm -hmm. And I actually recite those words that are written for me, so it's not me. But I understand that is me at that particular time playing a character. Outside of that, I, I doubt myself so many times, I'm saying, yeah, who am I really? What, what do I really feel about this? And I question myself since I was a child because I had so many uncertainties as a child. When I was six and seven years old, I was placed in the first row of, in my classroom because the parents, the people loved me. The actors, I mean not the actors, the, the teachers loved me and put me in the front and I was also small. And I was terrified by being in the front because I had to scratch myself all the time and why? I had eczema, and eczema was terrible at the particular time. I would rip myself apart. I I'm talking about scratching myself all over myself. It affected me so badly that it, it hurt my personality. It hurt my ability to be able to speak to, with other people. Uh, and the only time that I was safe was because I was a great reader. I could read, and that reading, for some reason, I had no idea then, took me away from myself. I was, I, was, I was a structured reader, I knew what I was doing, and when I was in the front and the teacher would ask me to read, I would get up and read. But if they asked me a question, I was helpless. I was, my personality was, I was in, remember I, I left school early in life and joined the army at the age of 17 because I was two years behind. And why was I two years behind? Because of eczema, I was hospitalized twice and lost two years in school. So I was in school two years older than kids who were younger than me, and I was like a schmuck, excuse my language, sitting there in the school two years older than everyone else. So I left and joined the Army at 17. But, my but that's still with you, yeah. that experience for yes, you of always, this self-doubt. Yes. So still to this day, even after all of the yes. success yes. and all of the accolades from your peers. Yes. And, you and all the awards. I got a God knows major awards. I don't know. Louis knows better than me. I think it's 34 major acting awards. That's huge. And, I, and I'm talking things. I'm talking about this, this, that. I'm Golden Gold. I'm the Academy Award. And I'm, there were so many things. And even when I got it, why was I not able to be joyful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why was I not be able to, oh, wow. I. It's Why? too bad, but you weren't able to do it even for a minute and then you stop yourself or even the whole time you feel like you could never feel joy. You know, I have a beautiful wife, Sandy, who I've been married to my, my whole life. It's the only woman that I've been with. And I think if she was, if she was an outward person capable of telling, because she's like me, she's a Gemini. She can't express her feelings. I mean, she cannot say you were great last night. That's the one I would love to hear say, Danny, you whipped me, you, you got, I, you, you were so great last night. If I would hear her say that, that would be enough. But Louie can tell you. Louis, Wait, really? She's never said that to you after she, yeah, something? We, 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 had, we Singing should, she has. Huh? Singing. Singing, your last gig at the... Well, the last gig at singing, at she came house. over to me. We were at the Break Brick House in Wyckoff, New Jersey. We sold the place out. It was, new mu music I was putting out, you know, the things I had mentioned yeah. to you about blues and so forth. And at the end of the show, backstage, she looked at me and she said, Danny, you were great. Now, if she knew what that did to me, I expressed, you know, but, but uh, I expressed to how I felt, but maybe I wasn't able to do it as much as I should have. It was the greatest feeling that I ever had. And also, 
even my kids, they take me for granted. Well, don't that's what kids do. I don't know that, but I don't know that. But I know that But now. that's what kids do, yeah. yes. But and, and to be able to hear my kids say, but now I don't blame them for anything. Right. Because acting is acting and what it is, it is. I sometimes sit back and I resent the fact that, so, oh, I love this actor. And, you know, they're talking about someone other than me. <laughs> what say, about what me? What about me? What, what do you mean my favorite actor? What about your father? They could never see me, probably, because when they watch me on the stage, you know what they see? And they see me in film. They say, that's you, Dad. Right. Well, I take great pride in saying, yes, that is me, because I try and bring myself to the screen. I, I try to bring those things that are beneficial to me. Uh, hopefully it would be to audiences watching me beneficial. You know, at the beginning of my career, I, uh, critics would say, oh, man, he's a natural. They were talking about Marlon Brando. I didn't know what I was doing. I couldn't even put together a proper constructed sentence. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't study. I didn't know what acting was. I just did it. So they said he's a natural. And I accepted that as an insult. I thought oh, natural sure. at that time of my career was an insult to say he's untrained. Yeah. And I was untrained. But that just shows what you're sensitive about. Yeah, that's right. It's not, it's a reflection of what you're struggling with internally. Yeah, yes. It's not the truth, the, the fact kids of the matter. The kid's a therapist, too. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. That's what she is besides this wonderful person.